Welcome to Creator You. What is going on? My name is Jordan P. Anderson, and welcome to a YouTube thumbnail tutorial. That's right. On this take, this one take that I'm going to do here, I'm going to recreate our Sam Cart YouTube thumbnails and also give you some pointers along the way. And let's kind of dive into it. First, I kind of want to show you some examples here. This is, uh, and we'll kind of talk about the philosophies throughout. We'll talk about some pointers. We'll talk about the, maybe I'll touch on the 10 commandments that you've been given a little bit. Let's start with some past YouTube thumbnails that we've done here. I am using, this will not be a Canva tutorial. This will just be on a professional editing, photo editing software. So if you are a fan of Photoshop, you'll find this very familiar. I myself, personally, I love this software here. This is called Affinity Photo. You can get it for, I think, $49. It's a one-time fee and you get it for life. You don't have to pay a monthly monthly fee for it. And if you are a Photoshop user and you are using and you are thinking about wanting to switch over to this, all the just think all the things that you hate about Photoshop are fixed in here in Affinity Photo. But let's dive in. Let's kind of I've got a few examples of some thumbnails that I've done in the past for the Tuesday takeover. Here we've got the Barstool Sports live version. We did a Doc Rock one. Here I can kind of break down, show you some of the layers here in these. And then we've got one from Think Media. This is one of my favorites here. And then even one here from Vanessa Lau that I also find this is a pretty solid one too. So let's talk about some of the similarities with these and maybe a little bit of the mindset that you need to go into when you are creating your thumbnail on YouTube. Now, rule number one or rule number two, whatever the commandments are, but in my head, rule number one is don't be boring. A lot of times people ask like, okay, are you trying to work within the Sam Carr branding guidelines or, hey, Jordan, we're trying to put together some rules and some parameters around how we work with YouTube thumbnails or if I were to outsource this and tell a freelancer, hey, go make a YouTube thumbnail for us and make it catchy, make it great. There will be, in my head, there are no brand guidelines when it comes to a YouTube thumbnail because the most important thing I want you to do as the viewer is I want you to click on the thumbnail. I don't care if it's the right shade of blue or our favorite kind of font or your favorite kind of font. All that I'm worried about and all that I want you to be worried about when you're designing these YouTube thumbnails is to be as catchy as possible, as clickbaity, irresistible as possible so that you get your audience to click. Because if they don't click, then they don't watch your video. That's it. That's, so this is the game. This is the this is 90% of the battle. If you can get your thumbnail looking awesome, compelling, irresistible, it pokes at a problem, it excites people, it piques their curiosity, you're going to get them to click, then they're going to watch your videos, they're going to fall in love with you, they're going to then subscribe, buy your products, all that stuff, but it all starts here with the YouTube thumbnail. So let's talk a little bit about the what I got going on here, some of the layers, the elements that I've added just to make this well, so beautiful. We'll do a little chef's kiss. Let's start with one. Let's start with the, the Barcel Sports one. Oh, I should mention too. Before we go, after, once we've gone through this, I will then recreate, I will show you from scratch, a from 0.0, .0 showing you everything there is to know about how to create a thumbnail here on Affinity Photo. And again, if you're on Photoshop, these are very similar uh, softwares. And... Yeah, show you how it's done, and we'll even cut out some stuff in the background. We'll uh, do a little Photoshop magic. But yeah, let's go into the David Portnoy one here. This is the Bar School Sports one. So with the Tuesday Takeover, we're always trying to, you have to think about the content that you're selling. You have to think about the hook of the video or think about a reason why somebody would click on something like this or a fan of Barstool Sports that is browsing on YouTube when they see something, why would they click on this specific one? And what I went with is to put two familiar things here. We got the Barstool Sports logo in the background, and you've got, of course, Dave Portnoy's picture right in center, as large as it can be, so that it's an instant like, oh, hey, I know that face, or hey, that's Dave Portnoy. And then, oh, then add this one twisted element here to say, sorry, we're closed which I think is just some great clickbait. And I say clickbait in a great way. It is truly clickbait, the, the the dark way of clickbait, the like dark psychology of clickbait. It's only clickbait if what you are promising or promoting in the headline or in your thumbnail do, isn't delivered in the content. So I think we delivered some great content 
And I do not care how clickbaity this looks because I know on the back end, on the content side, that this is going to be, that we're going to deliver on the promise. And again, I got probably, there's another rule there. So it's just like, get the click as much as possible. Like do whatever you can to get a click. Don't be boring and find something interesting. Find a hook, find something that piques their interest that pokes at people's emotions or makes people go, what? For this one, it's like Barstool Sports is closed. Whoa, like, okay, I got, I got to check this out. So that was kind of the element. So let's kind of break this down. What we have here, we have a face, large face. We have some kind of background element, and then we have one or two objects in the scene. So we've got, obviously got this this close sign. We've got the Barstool logo here, and we've also got Dave's face. So those are the kind of like, I, I don't want the scene to be too busy. When I say that, I mean, I don't want there to be so many elements or to be so much text on the screen that it becomes very difficult to understand what's going on, or it's a lot of reading, or when it is super tiny, say on your phone, like this size, can't you know, are you able to read all the text on your screen? A lot of people they want to put their entire title in the in the thumbnail, write a full sentence or bullet points or make it look like a slide deck. Wrong. Just you, limit your text as much as possible and try to choose your words carefully and choose the words that are going to hook, excite, pique your interest. And yeah, so that's kind of, so those are kind of three elements. So we got kind of like one here, the, the face here. We've got the background element. And again, the this one, this is the kind of story element that kind of gives you a little insight as to like, oh, what is this about? Oh, it's about this. It's about maybe Barstool is going to close for good. And we're going to show you how to prevent Barstool from closing for good. Uh, we can get into some of the styling stuff here. I've cut out, this was a photo of Dave Portnoy, and then I've cut out the background, added a shadow, just add some depth with the this close sign. Added, you can see this kind of glow effect here. I can go into the shadow section here. We've got some drop shadow just to add a little bit of layers. And then we've got the outer glow because that's what it normally looks like, but now let's make it look like, kind of like a neon sign at a little outer glow. But I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get too far into this. Let's move on to the next one, just kind of give you some examples of kind of what we're working with. The next one is a Doc Rock. We did a takeover again of Doc, of Doc Rock. Doc Rock's a Ecamm YouTuber, live streamer. So we wanted to have some video elements in there. We would try, I was trying to think of a hook, and I went to, I went to Doc Rock's own YouTube channel found one of his thumbnails and I just copied it and erased him from the background. And now I have my own little doc rock element that I can add in here. So he's already got some great thumbnails. So I was just kind of able to kind of copy a little bit, do a little cheating here. But you know, again, we've got a face, we've got some story elements and we've got the main copy, the titles, the interesting story element that is going to pique your interest as an audience member. So million dollar live stream studio. Oh, that's interesting. And again, do the you always want to do the zoom out test. We'll kind of talk about this when we're building it. Use the zoom out test to say like, is this going to work? Can I still read that that says $1 million? And the answer is yes, I can read that. So that means it passes the, that's called the squint test. Like if you, if you can squint and you can still see it, then it's sized up enough. But again, very simple. We're keeping it like person, story element, text. That's it, one, two, three. And make, choose kind of which one you want to be the largest one. Don't try to compete if I were to make Doc Rock here as big as the text, it would, everything now starts to feel like it's kind of competing or like a, if I were to take this camera here and make it as big that just like now we're, it's the, it's a little bit too crowded and I can't really understand as the viewer, what's the priority? What do I need to focus on first? I kind of guide your, the, the audience's eyes when you're kind of creating this. Get this back to normal. Let's move on to another one. Think Media, here's just another example. So f again, Think Media has some great thumbnails. All you have to do is go to their thumbnail, copy their YouTube link. I'll show you how to do that. Copy their YouTube link, throw it into this getthumbnail.com and save the thumbnail, cut out Sean here and add a little, add some layering, add some styling effects. He's got a, an emotion cells, having a, a big crazy face, big emotional face is great. And again, we're talking about like the demise of Think Media. So we want to kind of show that, oh, oh, their stock is going down. Think Media is on, on, the, on the fritz. Again, we, we have three elements here. We have our face, we have our object, our story element, which is that big red arrow. And then we have some text, which is the Think Media logo itself. So people that are familiar with Think Media will see that logo and go, oh, Think, and then they'll see Sean and they'll make the connection. 
and they'll go, hey, I know this, I'm familiar with this, and then see the big red arrow and go, oh no, they're about to crash, their company's about to crash, I better check it, check it out and watch this video. Again, very simple stuff. And, and then you hear it in the background, just to add a little bit of finesse, found a little stock ticker, added to some blue layer, just to kind of add a little bit of, uh, first off, it just started off, I think, as, let's try to, I'll break this one down for you guys. I've even got some things here, just like, just some <laughs> trash elements in the background. Some arrows that never made the cut. And you can find all this pretty much on Google Google Images, which is great. So I've got Sean here, Think Media, the red arrows. I've got this right here, which I'll bring the opacity up to 100%. So I just found a, a photo of just stock images. Let me find this layer right here. I think it's... Stand by one second, folks. Yeah, and over here, and what I normally do for all this is I have a template file for these YouTube uh, thumbnails and I'll just kind of open the same one. I'll do a save as. So as you can see down here, I've got a lot of uh, spare elements that I could use that I can, hey, if I need it, I can grab it. But if I don't need it, I can simply just hide it, put it away. And for some reason, this, I think it might be locked. There it is, found it, awesome. So this is a, uh, yeah, this is a stock image I found of the, of the stock market, scaled it up to be pretty high up and then drop the opacity down to about 38% and then also added some, a little bit of blue to add kind of a blue highlight made it a blue background uh, I guess I could have even done this in the reverse so to speak and then add later the blue on top of the stock market image but I wanted the kind of I wanted those numbers to kind of really shine through to make it feel like this kind of this little bit of stock market effect and then I found this arrow here on Google Images I added some effects to it so what we added a little bit of blur just to kind of give it some depth to make it feel like kind of like a camera blur like things in the background a little bit blurrier than what's in focus and then that was pretty much it wanted to wanted to keep this as simple as possible i think this already had the black stroke around the black outline and then you kind of position it where you want and then grab the think media logo and for the think media here i added a shadow just to again add a little bit of separation from the background added a black glow just to make the shadow a little bit larger than what i wanted and think media does not have a black stroke around it and added a black stroke just to make it a little bit more readable and then we go ahead and add Sean's face, and Sean's face has shadow, of course, and has an outline. I think the shadow is a little bit more apparent when I, there we go. That's a little bit more apparent when I kind of move him off to frame. But again, the largest element that I want you to focus on is Sean's face. That is the kind of like, I want, when you use people's faces, you probably want them to take up at least a third of the screen, if not more. Probably could have gotten away with this. It feels a little bit tight. It was a little bit crowded, but I think it could have worked too. So you kind of, but to say, oh, let's make Sean's face this small doesn't feel as important. And I'm being, I'm exaggerating a little bit to the, just to get his point across. But you know, you know, it doesn't really feel like Sean is the main character of this thumbnail. And it also, it's, I want to see Sean's emotion. Like that's, we're so drawn to people's faces, emotions that to just have that cover one third of the screen makes it and you zoom out and you just see this of your scroll remember you're scrolling on your mobile phone you're scrolling on your desktop and you see just this tile of, of thumbnails and you're going to go which one am i going to click on which video am i going to watch today and if i see this big face and it looks like he's cringing a little bit then that's going to compel me a little bit more to check it out so that's the thing media one now let's go to uh, Vanessa Lyle. This is kind of an older style that I did uh, a couple months back. And this is one of the earlier takeovers, but this one actually performed really well. I had a pretty good click-through rate. Let's break down the elements. Again, we have a face, we have a text element, and we have some story elements here. Maybe the palm tree could count a little bit as a story element, or the studio background could count as a story element. But at least now we have something that says how to 10x Vanessa Lau. The copy on that one isn't probably the best, but I think it works because now if Vanessa Lau sees this or you see this, one you go, oh, that's Vanessa Lau. I'm familiar with Vanessa Lau. Let me check it out. And then how to 10x Vanessa Lau, that could be a little like, huh, what are they talking about? Like maybe that's, I guess, something I can maybe check out. They're going to 10x Vanessa Lau. They're going to make her from a millionaire to 10 millionaire, whatever you want to call it. But again, let's break down kind of what's going on here in the frame. And... I usually have this on frame a lot of times. This is like kind of a just Google search on Google Images, YouTube thumbnail. 
It's probably like YouTube thumbnail guide. And this will show you all the elements that are in a YouTube thumbnail. So you've got the, the playlist, you go to youtube.com, you'll see the play button and the timer at the bottom. So you kind of want to be conscious of what you're placing on the screen here because you don't want Vanessa's face to be covered up by the play button or to have some important piece of copy covered up by the timer on the screen. So it's important to kind of have this. I always kind of reference it a little bit. I lock it, make it invisible. Well, let's talk about some of this, what we got going on here. Now, fonts are super key. You want to find, like, you, if you're going to make great thumbnails, you need to kind of become a fonts master. You need to become familiar with what fonts are out there. And I'll even walk through, like, how to find some great fonts. There's some good fonts on Google. There's some great fonts on Adobe. Dafont.com, D-A-Font.com. Uh, uh, what's another one? Uh, Elements Envato has great fonts that you can do for a subscription. But, you know, big, bold, that chunky font is great on YouTube because it's just so easy to see. It's fun. It imp it's impactful. You want to kind of avoid all the serifs and the, the the curly, swirly, cursive, -y, elegant fonts. You want kind of big, bold, fat fonts that are going to punch you right in the face as you see them. So yes, become a fonts master. Become really familiar. You know, even something like this with the the kind of stripe stroke brush is kind of cool for some elements. But if this entire thing was the brush stroke, it would be ungodly, unreadable. And you're just like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Even something like this, when you kind of go all caps, you're like, okay, this is kind of cool. But again, it's like, I can't fully read that that says Vanessa Lau if you gave me half a second to read it. So bigger, bolder, fatter, chunkier font is always going to work. And then the use of color here is to separate. So how to very boring generic phrase and then 10x is big and then Vanessa Lau is most important. So like I want 10x and Vanessa Lau to be emphasized whereas I want the word how to to kind of fade to the background. And I think I've done and I kind of did the same thing over here on the Doc Rock. I want the million dollars to really stand out with the bright neon green and I want Livestream Studio to kind of fall back a little bit and be second important, second most important thing that you should read. What else can I add to this? So with Vanessa Lau, yeah, so we got the text elements here. I will mute those. A lot of times you're going to do some kind of iterations. You're going to find a photo that you like, that you may cut out, and that you may test out. I found this photo of Vanessa Lau. It was not as interesting as the one that we have now. She's holding a camera. She's kind of has a great expression. It's it is a little bit sharper, to be honest. When I scale this up, got this off Google Images. When I kind of scale it up, it doesn't have the same resolution in my mind. And I kind of want it to be as clear and crisp as possible. For Vanessa, I will zoom her out. And yeah, and see how large the photo is. So I, I could have really played with the sizing here, placement of Vanessa. But again, I want faces to be as big as possible and as important in this scene as possible so i want this could have this is a nice photo waist up a little bit it's like good proportions in terms of like photo framing composition but i can't see vanessa's face and i can't and i want to see it more especially if i squinted and it's really zoomed out and tiny it's like compare to that like take a look at that like can you really tell what's going on or is that like is it big enough to catch your attention versus something that is let's go back to the original size something that big right there boom center frame it's you get it you get what's going on you see a camera in her hand oh okay she's a vlogger a creator very cool what else do we have going on so with her the effects i have are outer shadow which again just to add some depth add a little separation from the background i have an outer glow which is kind of hard to see and very subtle maybe probably not even readable at this point and then i have an outline outline just to Again, it's kind of my style. It's a very YouTube-y style to do to add that kind of white outline. I think I have it here on Sean as well, and I think I might. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It's it's kind of 50-50. It's kind of whatever I feel like it makes sense or looks the best. And it kind of makes it look kind of like clip art, almost like she's a sticker that I just slapped onto this thumbnail. Very fun. That's the kind of elements for Vanessa. And then let me kind of make her invisible so we can kind of focus on the background. I added a blob here just to kind of separate her from the background. Because if you don't have the blob, see, it's kind of, she. it's a white background, white outline. You can't even see it anymore. But if I had this little shape element, this little blob, now all of a sudden she's separated from the background. You can make it bigger. And again, I want her to be the focus that if you're a Vanessa Lau fan and you see this thumbnail, you're getting excited and you're going to check it out. What else do I have in the background? And also here, I had some creative styling stuff here. I did a, a paint, I did like a paintbrush here of like the letter X. I literally just painted the letter X and added a gradient. 
and duplicated it, made two different groups, just to add some fun elements on top of that. And then in the background, we have our studio. Just studio, add a little bit of Gaussian blur, just again to not make it as clear and crisp, just to add a little bit of photo effect. Things in the background are kind of blurrier than in the foreground. And then I also added, and I say this is like kind of a, an older style that I've done, is I added, let's add the text here, is I kind of added this kind of green collar that's kind of popular with a lot of YouTube channels. A lot of YouTube channels will do this. They'll kind of, they'll add this kind of green border, colored, specifically colored border around a video that falls within a certain topic. So if, you know, this is a tutorial video, it'll be a purple border, but this is a vlog, it'll be a red border. This is something stylistically that I kind of liked. And then also I'm able to kind of play with the depth. Like it looks like when I place her on top of the border, it even adds a little bit more of a 3D effect. So we're getting a little bit too in the weeds on this one, but, but that's kind of like, these are kind of the top four that I really like. Would love to, uh, that's a yeah, let's kind of stop here. And now let's go and uh, let's actually make one of our own. Let's make one from scratch. Let's go to, let's make a 1920 by 1080. I'll make 144 DPI. We want a horizontal. And that is not it. <laughs> what am I doing here? Let's start over. We want it. Oh, I see. Let's go to web. Let's go down to, here we go, 1920, a 16 by 9, because that's what YouTube is, 16 by 9. 19, you can do a 720p, but you know, if you do a 1920 by 1080 frame, it's a little higher resolution. And when it gets cropped down to 720p on YouTube, it will still remain high resolution. So let's start, let's start from scratch. So we're, we're making, let's make a video, let's make a video thumbnail about this course itself. So if I'm going to, hey, how to use YouTube, how to create a YouTube thumbnail from scratch or the 10 commandments of YouTube thumbnails, let's start there. So what I have already done, before this, I'll bring in these photos here just to kind of show you guys. When you're making your videos, at the very end of your videos or at the beginning of your videos, it I highly recommend that you take a pause and you sit there and make funny poses, it, like especially for the video itself. So like you're aware, able to wear the same shirt in the video for the in the thumbnail and in the video, it just kind of makes it, it kind of marries it together. And it's just a little bit more details that are just kind of like, wow, this, this creator really cares about what they're doing. So here's what I did. I rolled the camera before we got started recording this and I did a couple poses. Did a couple pointing, look kind of cheeky, look kind of funny looking video. And hey, why don't we go with this one? So you take some poses, you, and you, all, all you have to do is just roll the camera for a minute and just just kind of freeze. Just pause for a second. That gives you enough of a still frame where you can go in and grab the frame out of the video and then save it as a JPEG or save it as a PNG to your desktop. And then you're able to go and cut it out. So let me show you how I would start from scratch, how I'm going to figure out how I would do this. How, like, how do I start? What's, what, where do I start, Jordan? What do I do? So we don't need these right now. So we could, you can, if you want to, on Photoshop, cut it out and say, hey, select subject. We could, we could go and do that process if we want to. I could do rasterize. I'm not even saying it right, but like cut, cut out Jordan, make sure the edges are nice and clean. I make, get my hair just right, cut out the lamp, cut out the microphone and, and, and pull out Jordan and, and there we go. But it's not always clean with the hair. It's always going to be something in the background. It's I missed a little bit of the, the headphone. And some of us just aren't, I, I've been doing Photoshop for 10 plus years. And I still, it still takes me a minute to go around all of these little edges and make sure I'm just exactly getting everything that I need. Well, folks, we have AI now, so we don't have to, we have machines and computers that can do all the work for us. And uh, I'm not going to waste any time. And I'm frankly a little bit lazy. So let's go over to my favorite website as of late. It is called very simply erase.bg.com, erase.background. Or not .com, erase.bg. That's it. And all you do, it's free. You don't even have to sign up. You just upload your image and it will start to chop out you from the background. So I say upload image. I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to find the photo that I want. Let's do this one. And I sit here. I hang out for a second. I drink my coffee. And just like that, it may give me an advertisement to say hey, you should sign up for the full price. But boom, that's it. Right there, I say download original size, 
it goes to my downloads folder and then I'm going to bring that over into magic beautiful beautiful stuff that's it that's all there is to it so now I'm completely cut out of the background so this is gonna be you know, how to create amazing thumbnails <laughs> so the more and, and folks the more ridiculous the face the better the better click-through rate the better your video is gonna be higher si higher subscription rates more products more money this is this is you if you're not making crazy faces what are you really doing on YouTube? Get off, get off, just close your channel down. So let's do this. Let's think about now, I'm trying to think about when I'm making these thumbnails, I'm thinking about a hook. What can I say? What can I do? What can I show that is going to get someone to click on this, uh, especially this tutorial on how to create amazing thumbnails. So I need to think about what kind of text can I put? I need to think about what kind of copy or what kind of text uh, sales copy headlines that I could put that's going to get people excited. So. Let me think for a second. Why don't we do, let's first start with our, I'm thinking something with the Photoshop, something with the YouTube logo, again, to kind of grab. Those are some story elements that we can use that people get excited about, that's very familiar, that has some, if they don't know who I am, at least they know what Photoshop and YouTube is. So they can click on that and say, oh, he's making a YouTube thumbnail tutorial. Let me click on this and watch, check it out. So why don't we find, let's go back over to the internet and type in Photoshop logo. And this is exactly how I do it every single day, folks. Every time I make a thumbnail, go into Google Images and I'm finding, boom, the Wikipedia, copy the image, paste the image, and now I've got it here. Step one. All right, now let's go find a YouTube logo. Uh, I kind of don't want the YouTube mark. I kind of just want the big photo. Again, another image from Wikipedia. Thanks so much, Wikipedia. And now we've got two little logos here, all cut out perfectly, PNG, transparent background. You'll love it. So now let's think about a background. Now the cool part about, I don't think this is in Photoshop, but the cool part about Affinity Background, Affinity Photo, is that it has stock images baked in. So I can just type in here, why don't we say like Art Studio. I can type in into Pixels and start to find some, find some images that might be interesting. All right, maybe I don't want Art Studio. Maybe, why don't we try Photoshop? Let's see what see what we get. So we got a guy working on Photoshop. We got a laptop. We got some computer images. Maybe I want to show Photoshop itself. But let's try graphic design. And for the sake of this video, I'll keep it brief. I won't get too picky about it, but I'm really trying to find something that's going to work, that's going to sell the story, that's going to Oh, it would help if I spoke graphic design, right? Something that's going to really sell that colorful, interesting, fun, where it all feels cohesive. I kind of like this one right here. I think I've used this in the past. And I'm sure... All right, so it's way really big. So I'm going to take it down, size it down, get it kind of over our... All right, I'm really liking this. Great color contrast, too. Yellow, awesome, awesome color. And let's move this down to the very bottom we want this to be the background of course now let's start to think let's let's play how can we get jordan to do the most interesting pose how, or how can we separate jordan from the background let's add a little bit of outer shadow and affinity photo has this nice offset tool where i can kind of drag the shadow where i want add some radius add a little bit of blur to it i'm liking this what else could we do? We could try the outer outline that I've normally done. Now, see, this can be a little tricky when you have, uh, this means that there's some parts of this that aren't fully cut out. So what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to turn off outline and I kind of want to go in and almost crop this. So I'm going to hit the marquee tool with the M tool and I'm going to select this layer. Control select I, which selects the inverse of everything. So I want everything that's not what's in the marquee and I'm gonna hit delete. And sometimes you think you have it selected and you don't. And what's not, <laughs> the reason it's not working is because I haven't ras rasterized, which is just make it kind of flat, make the image flat. And I want to select everything and delete it. Okay, so now we've got that in there and let's test out the outline again. And what I can do is I can just go in with the eraser tool and just start to erase some of these odd artifacts that kind of got left over from the from the erase bg so erase some of that so now it's not part of the outline now the outline here is black i cut maybe i want it a little white i can hit the w key and hit the w key again and do an auto select of 
I don't want to select the background. I want to select Jordan. So I can do the magic. It's the magic wand up here. Select everything. And what I love about Affinity Photo in Photoshop has this as well, is you can refine the edges here. It's a little chunk, chunky right here. I kind of really want to smooth it out. So I drag that smooth there. And I can even transform it to black and white to see how smooth it is. Because the smoother it is, that means those the outline, the stroke is going to be a lot smoother. And you know, I don't need the stroke to go over every piece of fabric that I'm on my shirt. So that looks a little bit better. And again, I want the image to be as large as possible. And why don't we add a little bit of color grading? Let's do, uh, let's hit the control M to add our curves, add a little bit of curve action to kind of make Jordan pop out some more. Just to do, yeah, it's looking pretty nice. And on Affinity Photo, you have to group uh, your layers because if you had the curves, the curve is also going to affect the layer down below. And then also, this is how, like, if you ever seen a, a Mr. Beast thumbnail, this is how they get that kind of like, it looks very cartoonish doll Barbie look where it's just like their skin looks like plastic. Uh, let me kind of adjust this curve a little bit. Knock it down. Uh, but it's called the Dodge and Burn tool. So it's this right here, the, if I can find it. The, there it is, dodge and burn. So dodge with the right layer selected. And what I normally like to do is I like to control copy, uh, save myself kind of like an original version and lock it off and make it invisible. And that way I can completely destroy this layer on top. And if I say, well, I really messed up, I've still got the original copy back here. So keep that one back there. Let's do a little dodging and burning. Now the, I was getting them kind of mixed up. The dodge brush adds brightness and the, I keep missing it. And the burn tool adds darkness. So if I want to make something darker, so if I want to make my shadows darker or my, or my forehead shinier, I will use the burn or the dodge tool. If I want to make things darker, I'll use the burn tool. And then you can up here at the top, adjust the flow. You can adjust the opacity. I usually keep it around 25%. Keep the flow at 100%, zero hardness. I don't need an angled shadow or angled brush stroke on as I'm doing this. Now, what I kind of want to do to make me look kind of like as plasticky and goofy as possible uh, is I want to go over to, I kind of want to make my face a little bit more highlighted than what it should be. Uh, and then I can also select, you know, tonal range. This is affecting the midtones and I kind of, or the highlights now kind of want to affect the midtones. Maybe make my shirt a little bit brighter. Maybe some of these shadows under my nose a little brighter. And then I kind of want to go and switch over to the burn tool and do the same for the shadows. Now make the shadows like very dark and I'll make my shirt dark because I want people to just solely look at my face, make my headphones darker and make my the chin here darker. It like you can you can get completely insane with this stuff. You can make it just as <laughs> and this is <laughs> so and just as a reference, like this is the original and this is the dodged and burned version. As you can see, it's just like you can really make someone look just like a complete plastic doll by just adding all this dodge and burn stuff. So I can grab here. I can make it even brighter, make it even more insane. And I kind of want to adjust the white balance a little bit. So I'm going to take some of this, make me a little bit cooler, maybe add a little, uh, take a little magenta out and go back to doing a little dodging and burning. You know, sometimes if you messed up a little bit too much, you can kind of burn over where you dodged or dodged over where you burned. This is looking great. You know, make this my brush a little smaller, make those eyebrows nice and dark and make my eyeballs as bright and white as possible. Looking great. Love it. Okay. So we got this kind of large. All right. So it's pretty large in the background. Now let's work with, we can lock that off for now. Uh, and let's work with our two logos here. So I kind of want to do the same effects with these logos. I want to add some shadow to this. I want to add an outline to this, maybe a glow effect to each one. Uh, I can see with the Photoshop one having like this blue glow and the YouTube one having a red glow. And I might even play with the 3D elements to make this more kind of bulgy 3D kind of tokens on here rather than just flat plastic fake objects. Because that's what we want. We want to make everything as realistic and very cool as possible. So we can first start with uh, probably, let's just do outer shadow. I tend to do a, a vertical drop shadow right below something and we'll kind of spread it out a little bit. It's kind of hard to see what we're doing with behind this black background, but I kind of like the black background here because that makes everything 
more focus here. Uh, we can add a glow outside it for now. And we'll work with the colors here individually and then maybe even outline uh, just a mild one. And we'll probably affect each of those too. And when you kind of add a stroke with a glow, it makes, it's this kind of like neon bulb effect. Like the neon bulb itself is a solid white piece of uh, solid white element. And the glow is this kind of faded look. And it just kind of adds a little bit more emphasis, some oomph. It kind of adds it, makes it, I just think it makes it look cool. So with the outline for the YouTube one, I'm going to take the eyedropper here and drag it on and say, you know, maybe play with like, do I want a dark, dark red kind of outline around it? And it'll kind of be more apparent once I add a red glow. And then we'll go over to our red glow and add a red glow. And we can make it a little brighter, a little bit more saturated. We can go into the settings here. And it's using screen, so we could say normal if we wanted like an even bigger, brighter intensity. We could really crank this up. But the kind of more you crank it up, the more it looks terrible. So you kind of want to find that happy medium right there. Like it, it's kind of like blood red. And as you kind of go work with it, you're like, okay, maybe I didn't like the, the white stroke right there. Maybe I just wanted it to be what I want. I think looking at this, you need some kind of structure to it. So let's add the white because YouTube's colors are red and white. Makes sense. And then let's click on the 3D layer. And we can kind of change the direction. Hit the undo. Uh, let's see, yeah, there we can kind of add that kind of bulging effect. And let's remove this just for a second, just to kind of get a good idea of like, and maybe soften it a little bit. See, now it looks kind of like a 3D YouTube blobby thing, which is kind of cool. But maybe you want to drop the stroke a little more zoom out a little bit i like it i like it maybe add a little canted angle a little dutch angle just to add some fun to it and maybe even on jordan we'll kind of go back over we're going to kind of play with all of these we're all of these now we're building these little puzzle pieces and then we're going to take all the puzzle pieces and kind of rearrange them however we like now i could like take jordan and really make it a canted angle i could make him like coming out the side where i'm like oh look at this this is amazing oh you know what, whatever the the goofy ass face of the day is is what we're gonna do. So we're if he's if I'm just right here, the eye line is almost like maybe I'm looking at the Photoshop like this is the most amazing Photoshop ever. Uh, but when you can kind of really you can put them on the edge of the frame and it kind of makes it look like um, are you seeing this? So that kind of goofy. All of it has emotion. You can like this is how you can tell you tell your story how you want to. I kind of like this. This is I'm I'm laughing to myself. So we will keep that for now. Keep this right here, make it a little bigger, maybe not as aggressive, but that'll work. And we'll go back to locking that one. Now what we can do on Affinity Photo, and you can sometimes do this on Photoshop, we're going to control C, and we're going to click on the Photoshop, and we're going to go up to edit and paste effects. So by pasting effects, we're going to paste the glow, we're going to paste the shadow, we're going to paste the outline, and we're going to paste the 3D effects. Now it's going to be wrong, but that's okay. It, but it was still, some of the stuff is easy to change, and the other stuff is not so easy to change. So now we obviously need to change the blue glow, or from red to blue. Maybe a little bit sky bluey kind of right there, and 100% of intensity. I wonder what inner glow looks like, if we can kind of like make it maybe seem like it's kind of like electrical, electrified neon kind of effect. Just a little bit, scale it back some, maybe make it more, bring up the saturation, choose blue here on, on the spectrum. I'm liking this. Not bad. I might bring that over to the YouTube side. Uh, for the outline, I kind of want to go a darker outline, but blue, kind of dark navy blue feels correct. If not, no outline at all. Probably for this one, no outline. And that's just kind of based on what the Photoshop logo looks like. And we're going to give it a canton angle and kind of make it seem like these are two little elements together now let's probably work on the background now that we've got kind of these two these three elements you know the story element in, the, in my face worked out let's kind of make these and we can make them invisible if we want to just so that we can clearly see the background i'm going to create a new layer drag it right above the background here and i'm going to hit the u button which is going to give me a shape layer and probably do let's test out Let's make it saturated. 
Let's test out a completely yellow and maybe make it the same shade of yellow. So grab that eyedropper, that shade of yellow on here. Now it's fully op full opacity. And what I want to, why I want to do this is a little bit of color theory with the, with this red and blue and the yellow. Now we kind of have the primary colors and I want separation. I want Photoshop and YouTube to push out as far as possible and I want the background to fold in as far as possible. I want as much separation as possible. I want you to look at these two logos. I don't want you to look at this background necessarily. So I can, I can play with the opacity here, I can do like 50%, or I can also play with the blend mode. So this is a normal blend mode. I can do kind of an overlay. I can tell it to do a screen overlay, whatever kind I want to do to what makes the most sense or what feels cool. You know, some don't even, doesn't even affect anything. Uh, the average, that feels interesting. That feels kind of like 50% opacity. I kind of am digging the multiply here. And then let's bring all our elements back. Now, once you have everything, you can kind of clearly see what's going on. Now, maybe I don't want this. Maybe I backtrack and I go, maybe yellow wasn't the right idea. Uh, maybe we want to keep the background just as is, but now we just want to add a little bit of uh, emphasis. So what I could also do is get my paintbrush out, get my paintbrush ready to go, make this a large paintbrush, and let's make our hardness zero. And so now we have a soft paintbrush and we're on our own layer and I want the color to probably be black. And kind of what I want to do is maybe make this kind of my own little vignette. So I'm going to make this very, very large and I'm going to paint the edges of this right here. And I've painted it and let's kind of delete these guys for a second, make them invisible. And it's just kind of this painted vignette that I've, I've added on here. I can scale it up. I can change the opacity, which I'm going to do, probably make it a, maybe 50%, just to kind of, again, on, because the interesting parts are on the edges of the, of the frame here. Now, with it right here, I feel like this is making this section a little bit too dark, where, so maybe I go in here, and I make my erase tool, again, just like the brush tool, zero hardness, make it very soft, make it very large and kind of do one little stroke here, just so that I can be, my face can be emphasized as much as possible, where it, and it's not competing for this yellow background. And what I could also try is maybe like a gradient. So I could come over here, add a new layer, hit the G key, and drag over a gradient, change the gradient to, let's say, uh, maybe we want kind of a yellow, or maybe a green, that could look cool. And then maybe like a green and a yellow. Bring up my saturation, and it's this kind of green. This is very, I say this is a very loud thumbnail, but I'm kind of okay with it. I can kind of bring it down a little bit. I can go back to my G key and kind of see where we were with this. Am I still in love with this? Do I still like what's going on? And now that I kind of look at it like this, I am... I kind of like this a lot. Let's keep it and let's take the background and put it on top of the gradient and let's make this almost down to zero because here's what it looks like. It's just a flat color, which is interesting, but I want a little bit of texture in there. And as you see, like as I'm bringing in a, a little bit more texture is shown. So maybe around like 25%, maybe, yeah, or maybe 20%. Now, this is a thumbnail without copy. There's no titles on it. This is very simple. This is, but seeing this, doing the squint test, zooming it out very far, you can still see YouTube, Photoshop, and my insanely emotional face. And you go, well, why don't you have any titles on it? Or why aren't you telling me what kind of video this is? Well, folks, that's what your YouTube title is for. So if you were to have how to make, how to make amazing YouTube thumbnails as your YouTube title, think of your, I want you to think of your title and your thumbnail as one whole sentence together. Whereas thumbnail is the first half of your sentence and the title is the second half of your sentence. So one kind of completes the other. And you would never in a paragraph, or if you're writing an essay or something, you wouldn't have two sentences saying the exact same thing stacked on top of each other. That'd be repetitive, that'd be redundant. So for to on here to how to make amazing thumbnails 
I didn't spell any of that right. But to have that on here, how to make amazing thumbnails, is, and I'll, I'll even be a little charitable to it. Like, let's say I, I had, to, had to add this kind of copy, you know, size everything up and, you know, find a cool font, spell thumbnails correctly. Let's say you know, I want to do our, our font or like a big, whatever. Make it cool and make it like a black outline. To have this on here, which I've seen a lot of you will probably do, and that's okay. Uh, but this feels like wasted real estate because I can say how to make amazing thumbnails. I can put that in the title of the YouTube video and add more emphasis to my story elements and make a more compelling story and on the facial recognition and emotional and logo recognition, I can really lean into those elements more than I can rely on the copy or the text or the title of the video inside the thumbnail to kind of get you to click on it. But you see this, you're probably more likely to click versus if it were this. Now it's a little bit busier. It's a little bit harder to read. You're not like, is this, you know, I'll, I'll even find a, a better font. Just that's something a little bit more readable and make it all caps. Scroll down. How to make amazing thumbnails. Again, this is fine. This is like, if you if I were grading you, I would give this like a C minus. Great. Everything is great going for it. But this right here feels redundant because this same thing can be achieved in your YouTube title. Now, you could say Photoshop magic. Photoshop magic. And that could maybe work or Photoshop magic. But now that I see Photoshop magic or a killer or amazing thumbnails it feels a little clickbaity it feels a little, it's kind of fun it's kind of wild i would even say like let's go to emojipedia here always on emojipedia and let's add like let's find like a magic wand magic wand here let's copy that image let's paste it on here and i've got like a little bit of an emoji i could probably copy the photoshop one paste the same effects and change the outer glow to white and maybe even delete the glow altogether and maybe make the outline white and now i've got and add some drop shadow a lot of drop shadow and now i've got a little like funny thumbnail here so amazing thumbnails bring it up above everything else something like that so this is like this is the constant working process of a thumbnail where you start with something, you're kind of happy with it. And I usually tend to say, like, go with it, stop right there. But now, see, it starts to feel a little busy. Or, like, the more you add, the more you mess with it, the more it's going to start to kind of you know, feel like, I don't really know what's most important. If I were to delete that, if I were to delete this, and just go back to Photoshop, YouTube, Crazy Face, it feels, that feels complete. So, let's stop it right there. This has been kind of a quick overview tutorial again those kind of the notes here are add faces faces are so important to kind of adding those make you stand out people love faces they love emotion so again if you are as you finish your video pause stand in there like an idiot and make these incredibly stupid faces the wilder the face the better and do some pointing point to the elements hey look here go here uh but again, kind of following that one, two, three rule of like the number one thing should be the face. The largest thing on the screen should be the face. And the second largest thing should be either the story element or uh, text elements. Uh, and then those kind of two and three can, can be interchangeable. So like for this one, again, like these text elements, sorry, but close is second largest. And the third largest is in the background, which is the Barstool logo. But again, like all of these kind of little story elements, these little lights here, cameras, the palm tree emoji here, Vanessa's little camera in her hand, the big red stock market arrow, and then on this one, the Photoshop, YouTube, you know, YouTube logos, those are my story elements. And for this one, I didn't need text elements, but I could have added text elements or I could have, uh, but if I were to add those, I could shrink them down and kind of add some text right here. But it's a learning process. It's a, you're playing with this, you're building these puzzle pieces and you're kind of just shifting them around until you're happy with them. Uh, and then you save it and you upload it to YouTube and you see how it performs. And I, it's important to be committed to something like this. Make it like once you're done with it, commit to it. 
but then I want you to go onto YouTube and as these perform, look at the click-through rate and the click-through rate will tell you out of every thousand people that watch this, how many of the thousand actually clicked through to then watch the video. And meaning they didn't watch any of the video, they barely read the title, they don't know who you are, they just saw this thumbnail alone and said, I want to learn about this, I want to watch this, and they clicked on it. And if it's performing poorly, you open up this file again and you change some of the, you know, maybe uh, different here or, you know, different facial expression, or it's not, instead of it being yellow, it's now just, you know, instead of being crazy gradient, it's now white, or it could be whatever. Something to make it different, something to kind of, you know, you're throwing your, your fishing line back out again to see what's going to work. Is this going to work? Can this help? Um, so yeah, so you're constantly iterating, changing, and just having fun with it. So thank you guys for watching. My name is Jordan P. Anderson. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram at Jordan P. Anderson. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions. And I'll catch you guys later.